All right. Uh, I think I came up with the best example to talk about the conditioning time step range node and what it's actually doing. So let's say you have two. Okay. So steps. So conditioning time step range, it controls at what point during the step process to start using or to stop using certain conditioning values. And the best way I can think of to explain that is if you think of steps in the most literal sense, like you're literally stepping with your feet, just imagine a staircase. Okay. So you have, you're telling a robot to walk forward up the staircase and then you're telling it to also walk backwards up the staircase. And if you combine those two things together, it might be confused on what you actually want and it'll try to do both at once. So walk forwards and walk backwards. It might decide to walk sideways, right? And that might not be what you want because you might want it to walk forward part of the way and then at some other point start walking backwards. And a visual example I can give you for that is actually this right here the example I was trying to use. So we have two prompts, one girl green here and one girl red hair. So what I did up here is I, we're ignoring this, I combine them at the same time. And what ends up happening? The AI seems to get confused and it, it kind of, it, it's basically doing a walk sideways. Like it's not doing green hair. It's not doing red hair. It's doing all things at once. Right. And that's not really what we want in this situation. So like, let's say in the situation I wanted it to walk up the stairs for like a third of the way and then when it gets to that point it turns around and then starts walking backwards up the stairs after a certain point so that is what time step range allows us to do it allows us to stop using certain conditionings at certain points in the step process so that's what we're gonna do right here i'm gonna replace the green here with well let's hold on let's see what they look like individually at first we're gonna generate one girl green here and see what we get one girl green hair. It's as expected. And now we switch to the red hair. What do we get? As expected. Okay. But then you, you, when you combine them both at the same time, you don't get green or red hair. It's wait. Okay. That's why I need to bypass this bypass. So if you combine both of those prompts at the same time, sorry for that mistake. It, it, it's like, that's, that's eh. the AI got confused, right? So time step range lets you specify at what point you want it to start doing something and stop. So if we if we actually enable this now, what's going on here? Let's follow the flow. So we have one girl green hair with this this node and it says start with 0.3. So what does that mean? It means so these are percentage values. So 0 would be 0%, 1 would be 100%. So a value of 0.3 means 30%. So 30% is in reference to our steps. So what this is doing is saying, hey, I want you to start using this one girl green hair conditioning once you get 30% of the way into the step process. And then if you generate now, see we're using this later in the stage, so the first thing that it sees by itself is just one girl red hair. And now we actually get a very interesting effect, is even though we're using green hair conditioning in conjunction with the red hair conditioning after a certain point, the color of her eye and the outfit actually changes as well. Because if we run the prompt just by itself with just the red hair, red hair, kind of amberish eyes, I'm assuming they would turn red later with like upscaling or something. And then her outfit's black. So it's, it's a very simplistic color palette. But then just telling it to use, you know, a little bit more color information with that prompt later in the stage we get a really nice effect where it kind of keeps the rest of the image composition the same, but we have more color diversity without it devolving into, uh, you know, this, like whatever the heck this is supposed to be all colors at the same time. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much how you use conditioning time step. Um, but uh, I, I want to do one more example though. I want to see what happens if we stop using this red hair. So we're going to, let's see. So the starts up, so this one starts at point three. So I think we're going to see what happens if we stop using the red hair conditioning after a certain point. So what's going on right here? This is what's going on. What are we doing? Let's clean this up a little bit. Move these over. Have this right there. Okay. So now we are telling the AI that from from zero so from the very beginning we're going to start using the red hair one girl but then we're going to stop halfway through okay so halfway through 10 steps we're going to stop 
and then 30% of the way in, we're going to use the green hair conditioning, and then we're going to continue using that up until the very end. So we're just going to see what happens. Let's just see. Very, there seems to be much stronger adherence to green. It's still very, very similar to the red, and that's because that's the first thing you start with. But there is a much stronger green presence now in the image, as you can see. So that was, oh, what did I just do? Oh, that's why. Okay. So I just plugged this into the positive node, and it, it didn't work. That's because it... So let's, 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 hold on. I just made a mistake and I just kind of want to go over why it generates like this. Like, why did it just come out pure noise? So the reason is you're telling it to use conditioning for the first steps or whatever, but then all of a sudden halfway through, you're all like, all right, do whatever you want. And it doesn't know what to do because it was never designed to just operate with, with these, these little fancy hacks that we like to use. So that's what, ha that's, that's what just happened right there. So what we're doing, that was, that was a tangent. We're just comparing. Comparing the original image with just the red hair. It was very strong red and black and white. Boring. Very boring. And then with all of these things combined, the much stronger green presence, better color diversity while still kind of adhering to the uh, original look of what the image had. So, yep, that's, that's basically how this works. Um, if you're curious about other things it can do, I encourage you to experiment because that is literally how I learn all of these things. <laughs> so, yeah, uh... If you have a question that is along the lines of, hey, what happens if you do this? Please try it because that is the only way anybody actually knows. Uh, yeah. Goodbye.